You were born on uh, 25th February 1938. Yeah. So this has got here Miss Larkin and Child. Yeah. So that's you. That's me, yeah. And the, the mother of this child who lives at 52 Long Ridge Road, Earl's Court. Yeah. So. Silver Lodgings. So was that where you were born? No, I was born in uh, uh, St Mary's Paddington. Now, this one says that you had to, you had to pay. Yes, you did. Yeah, at the home where she where she was lodging, she was paying twelve and six. Yeah, so sure. they said even here they said you know considered that you'd done your very best during the last past three and a half years to provide for Michael alone, and to ask you now to pay ten shillings would be asking too much. Yes, right. Well, this is your baptism certificate. Yeah, yeah, Highgate. Okay, so your mother's name was Eileen. Eileen, and sometimes she sounds it as Ellen. Okay, but yeah, yeah. so maybe yeah, so Eileen Larkin. Yeah. And your your baptism certificate is Michael Anthony Larkin. That's right. I was obviously I was a bit of a predicament, wasn't I? Some not calling me Michael, and another not calling me Anthony. Yeah. I mean, Anthony is the one that obviously stayed with me. Yeah, well that's it. People who know you as Tony, don't they? That's you? right. Yeah. Hmm. So you obviously went into. The care home in Southwark. Yeah. And that's where you started. And so where did you, from there, where, what I happened? Went, I went to Wiltshire. I was three and a half. Mm. So Wiltshire, wherever it was, a place called Exeter Road. So that was during the war? That was during the war, yeah. And the irony, the sister in charge at Wiltshire was Sister Patricia. And I was to meet her again when I, when I uh, was at St Mary's because she was the next sister in charge at Grey's End. Funny world, isn't it? Mm. To, after you'd come to Ray's End and, yeah, well, and I was, settled in. Yeah, I was thinking about Devon, you know, the, the memories of people mm. falling into the lake. Mm. And uh, the chap called Dickie Dido, he fell down, got a, a thing through his head, and, it, and he didn't die, though. And we always called him Dickie Dido. <laughs> Why? Because he didn't die, though. Oh, <laughs> I see. But he's always called Dickie Dido. Dickie Dido. Yeah, it's funny how things stay in. You remember some of the names occasionally, you know, Dutton's and people like that. And then when you go back and see the football team before the war, these were the people that used to play for St Mary's. Mm. So you knew them, you know. And of course, the uh, responsibility of the older boys, they had responsibilities. It was a big family. Oh, yeah. So everybody was yeah. in it together. That's right. Everybody's in the same boat. Was there any sort of, I mean, there must be, like, oh, all, a big open field, like all boys together, there must have been like a hierarchical system. I mean, obviously the bigger boys are bigger, but, oh, yeah. you know, you know what it's like. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, there's there's the tough nuts and then there's the... No, I, we had no trouble in that sense, funny enough. I don't remember any, any. I remember violence at St John's uh, later on in life, but no violence down there. No. It was just a big open countryside. And we're talking about a war. There I'm in Wiltshire, I know nothing about a bloody war. Mm. I go down to Devon, I know nothing about a war. But I do remember aeroplanes flying over and dropping silver paper. And we were sent out, you know what to do? Collect it. Mm. Why, do want, why do you want these silver bits of paper? Tinsel for Christmas trees. <laughs> for things. We, and that's what we do. So we got all, all these sheets of, uh, sheets of silver running around the fields picking it all up. And they're, they're part of the Christmas t tinsels. You know, you make them into rings and so forth. So, again, it's little things like that. And then there, there was the, the eggs the egg episode. That's a really loved one. I don't know why we stole eggs, but the kids did. But the chickens used to run wild. It's a country, a country house, so chickens were... But they'd lay eggs in the most strange places. And we'd pick them up. And our, his name was Mr Davis. He was the, obviously the gamekeeper come and made major domo for the place. And he started putting stone ones in, and some kids didn't be allowed the difference between a stone one and a bloody real one. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so they'd go yeah. back with their cold eggs. That's right. So you all lived there as a, as a family, yeah. and um, you know 
know, you, you know, dormitories, you ate, you ate all together in like canteens. Oh, yes, oh, yes, yeah. So his yeah. family life, in the understanding of most people's understanding of family life, is that, you know, they have their own rooms or they share it with a brother or a sister. That's right, yeah. Or, but we, we shared in job lots, you know, big, big crowd of us. Mm. And, yeah. and you ate in a, in a canteen in a, environment. A, a, a refugee, it's called. Yeah. Refugee, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it, uh, so I don't remember coming from Devon, but no, I see some Aliens and St Mary's. Mm. Um, and did you like Gravesend? Milton? Well, we didn't know anything about that, did I? I mean, no, it's, I was in Gravesend, um, and because I was too young, you wouldn't be allowed, you'd go out in uh, crocodile fashion to Wimmer Hill or somewhere down the promenade. Always crocodile fashion. Mm. Uh, and so you, you were all together. It wasn't too much later on in life that you got the freedom. Yeah. Because uh, you're a certain age. And when, when did that come? Uh, usually about 13 or 14, usually, I think, really. 13 or 14. Because by that time, St. Mary's were a havoc, playing havoc throughout the town, going up Single Well Road and allegedly burning Lady Bird cottages down and allegedly burning uh, uh, Sean Windmill down. Right, because I was going to ask about, you know, like like all organised, you know, if you're a big family, that's a lot of you. Oh, so yeah. you've got a, you've got a bit of a powerhouse there, really. Oh, so yeah. Did you come into conflict with the local lads, you know, in no. that sense? No, no, we were we were all stuck together. Yeah, you, mean, you that, did. But yeah, but the, the others are aliens. You know, they didn't, they didn't, didn't affect us because hmm. there'd be a big crowd of us and we're going to go to uh, Clay Lane Woods hmm. and we'd pick some potatoes up along the way from the fields down in Ifield Way now, pick the potatoes up and light a little bonfire and bake your potatoes. Or one of the other ones I remember was uh, Pine Avenue. Bloody big apples, really big apples. You won't be able to eat them. But we knew if you put them on a bloody bonfire, they were as sweet as you'll ever come. And, oh, they were gorgeous. I mean, all these apples always been much more uh, interesting when you stole them. I've never been keen on apples since I had to buy them. <laughs> You, your collecting, your interest in collecting. How did you come oh. about? You know, you told me about you you going up to um, uh, you, what, London. Going yeah. up to London. Yeah, it's taking days off. And yeah, but I still, as I, was, as I said, I've got books still that I bought there. Hmm. I think they're Groves and uh, composers. Okay. And I don't know why I bought them, but it's a thing that interests me at that time, I suppose. Hmm. I mean, I didn't have anything about classical music. My father's influence made me on that one, uh, adopted parents, um, he loved classical music, gave it ran on to me, and I loved uh, tenors, I always loved tenors, my doctor and mother loved ballet, my father loved opera. Okay, and so so you started taking time off and visiting London? Yeah, days off from school, uh, from work. Work, yeah. <laughs> you working? Or day school, yeah. night school, yeah. remember that, that was the things I was doing as well? Yeah, of course. Day school, night school. Um, the old tech school as it was. So, and um, what age did you sort of like come to, come to the realization that working at AEI or Henry's, or Henry's yeah. wasn't wasn't for you? I got so depressed. Mm. I really got so depressed. I had mates there, you know, and we'd go scrumping. You know, in the evenings we'd go over to the fields, um, do a bit of scrumping. You know, Albert Hooker, Billy Cook. Well, there's a handful of us, and we'd. Uh, we go of course the A2, which you could get across in those days. Fill ourselves up with bloody apples. Over the old, over, back over the A2, up the bridge over Springhead, up the old Roman Road as it was called. And we'd come up top of Springhead Road. We'd see a bloody great vehicle there, and the police. You think off we go, back down the hill, straight through to the cement works. It wasn't the cement works then; it was just a big open space. Park the apples at the bottom of a, a steps down the Granby Road. Albert on, on, in the morning would come along, pick the apples up and we'd share them out at work. <laughs> we used to know all the, all the, all the, used to tunnels. You knew the tunnels. Yeah, yeah. And so just, my area. Right? That's right. So off we go, through the tunnels, and uh, Albert or one of the lads would pick the apples up and we'd share them out at work the next day. You mean? Yeah. Uh, so I, I made friends with those lads. But I suppose like everything else, I was still hankering on to St Mary's. I was got to I was got Blackheath a lot because hmm. you your contacts. You mean um, meet meet the old boys and see what they're doing, what they're not doing, and we used to have uh, 
good old chat and cups of tea and lovely cappies in those days in Lewisham because we had a lot of lads bought a little they had a home in Blackheath but so Mary's had a, had a home, home there too yeah, that's so right. was that for the older boys that for the older boys for, for work so they got a place to stay at right. night so, so when they would got to sort of 14, 15, did they, 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 they stayed there until they found their own places. No, but they left Gravesend. Oh, yes. Is that what yeah, happened? 15, yeah. And they went to either Bletchley or uh, up to uh, Blackheath. So that's why you, as an older St Mary's boy, would what, end up up there, because these this was your family. Yeah, well, that's right. They were. You do, we were institutionalised in many ways, uh, but you don't, you don't realise that at the time, do you? Well, but, I mean, obviously, I wanted to contact my mates. Yeah. Uh, they were my mates, schoolmates. Um, and funny enough, we, we had little in common other than we were St Mary's boys, really. Mm. Um, but it was like a brotherhood, really. Um, one, we had one branch in Australia, we called the Grayson St Mary's Mafia, that jumped on the boats, disappeared in Australia. A lot of them out there, yeah. fiddling and diddlings. There was, I wasn't a fiddler in that sense, but a lot of some of the boys were very, very clever. And they'd done very bloody well. So, it's, no, it's not a matter of your background, it's a matter of how you what you use and what, how you use it when you think that a lot of them weren't highly educated. No, but I think you get, you gain a sense of determination. Yeah. Oh yeah, I can have a better laugh than that my lot. And you saw it with their, I've seen it with their children. Yeah, mm. but, well, cause that's when, I, when we started splitting really. Um, and uh, Henry's the same. You in the army, used to start writing letters to them. First fell in love there. Mm. Uh, a lovely girl with bright blue, uh, blue eyes. We didn't know what love was, but she was so attractive. This was at Henry's? Yeah. What was her name? Oh. Hmm. Do you know, I've forgotten for the moment. Okay. What was her name? I she had bit... But never go back. Because <laughs> when I saw her as a, a 20 year old, she had an awful Grayson accent. <laughs> Like, but I did your mother. But when she was fifteen. Yeah, well, she no, she be well, she be uh, seventeen or eighteen by the time when I come in the army. She was the same age as myself. Right. So when did you go in the army? Nineteen fifty-five. Right. Nineteen fifty-five. October nineteen fifty-five. <clears throat> I signed on in July, I believe. Yeah. I got a shilling. I don't. I don't remember getting the shilling, but I remember signing up. But. Uh, um, and then I, I come home to see my parents. I think that was, I think that was the thing that I got given away by Uncle like George, I, I believe, saying that wasn't at work. Yeah. If I wasn't at work, I was late, and he was recognised when I was late. So, so what happened? So your parents didn't know you'd signed up. No, and I came home and uh, sat there and I saw um, I've signed up in the army. Didn't seem too displeased about it. And, and what did you sign into? Well, who Three years. No, yeah, but what regiment? Artillery. So same, like, same regiment as my father. Like your father? Yeah. Uh, maybe it's something to do with that, I suppose. Yeah, I'm sure it was. Um, but they didn't seem to displease me. I was a very, uns a very selfish person. You don't change that much laughing, do you? But basically, I was selfish. Uh, I got in the army. I was to keep in contact and have my leave there. You know, they took me back every time. But when I went to... Um, I went to Ostwestry, Brecon, Brecon Lights up Brecon Wales, passed all the training, semi bridge, passed me a uh, drilled, and they was asking for volunteers, you do it six months, volunteers to go to Hong Kong. There was a choice of Hong Kong or Andover, which is in Hampshire. And I realised that if I was at Hampshire, I'll be trying at home most weekends, and Hong Kong seems quite a long way away. But my first snack was I was slightly too young. But as the boat wasn't going to go for another two months, but I actually volunteered. You always learn the first thing in the army, you have to volunteer. But I actually put my little hand up and said, I'd like to go to Hong Kong. I was the only one who wanted to go to Hong Kong. I know nothing about Hong Kong. But it seemed far enough away. How old were you though? I'll be uh, 18 then. Just 18. 18, Hong Kong, sounds good to me. 
So you, this was your this was your honeymoon period, and that was it. That really? was it. Yeah, I realised I couldn't come back to England and be stationed in England and actually ta being taking orders, mm. not doing you know doing as you're told. So you did your three years. And I came out. And then you... October, no, twenty third, I think, nineteen fifty eight. Okay. And then. Oh, that's where the complications come really. Um, I wasn't really sure what I was going to do really. I was coming out of the army, it's about all I knew, really. Mm. Uh, the folk, they didn't say I can come back again. They didn't say I didn't come back again. One day my mother got me out of bed, um, I must have had a hangover, which is quite normal, and says, um, if you get down to the clock tower and see Mr Patterson, there's a job going on the water board. So, off I went, just in time, about quarter to twelve. The officer closed at twelve. Anyway, I went in there. I've come to see Mr. Patterson. Gruff, gruff old chap, nice bloke though. Um, and he said, uh, I, "You would like to work for the war?" I said, "Yes, I would." I said, "Yeah, you yeah. know." And so he said, "What do you know about water?" I knew that I drank it, sir. Um, no anything else? No, sir. He said, "You'd be doing labouring." I said, "No problem." You know, didn't know what labour you know, it meant work. <laughs> <laughs> he says, uh, he says um, do you know where Glenview is? Where the water board office is? I said, no, that's up um, Lee Park Road, sir. Oh, he said, do you know something? He said, but I liked the other answers. They didn't know anything. Cause in theory, we should learn teach it, shouldn't we? He says, uh, come in Monday. So Monday morning, I went in there, up here. Cycle up here, on my bike. Oh, Jack the lad. Got into a gang that dug up roads. In those days, didn't have compressors, bloody hammers. <laughs> well, it wasn't me at all. But I, I had to, you had to do it. Yeah. You know, uh, Riverview Park, solid chalk, bullhead chalk, digging, digging. I had to dig as narrow as trenches as possible. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was famous for my trenches. <laughs> I mean, the bark bits in it, that's as far as I could <laughs> go. As wide as it needs to yeah, be. Yeah, and the promise to say, Make the holes big, because he, he, he was putting a bloody half inch pipe in there, he wants a bloody great trench like this, because he was fat. <laughs> and I used to make these little trench and these, they had to put the joints on, because obviously lead joints. Yeah. And anyway, in the end of the day, I applied to become a, a waterboard inspector, you know, um, which I duly became. Again, I couldn't be, I've got to go back on that one, because I was only 20 uh, when I joined the uh, waterboard. Yeah. The bastards docked my wages. They couldn't pay me a man's wage because I wasn't 21. Ah, oh, not really, not 21. Larkin played on the sympathy act, but he'd done all his life, really. So I played the sympathy act and said, You make the tea, Michael. So I made the tea. Well, I did dig in. <laughs> <laughs> so I made the tea and <laughs> laugh went thing. And if, if, there's a, if there's a trench to fall down, I'd fall down it. Times I walked into a trench and fell down it and broke, done my ankle or done something. Uh, and then um, I applied for the inspector, but I was too young. But uh, Ron Islop remembered I applied for it. And I was out in Cuxton. And he said to me, because uh, I was always late for work. Always late. I, I cycled out to Cuxton because I, I missed the lorry. Well, I <laughs> started down to Hyde because I missed the, the lorry. You mean, I was a tell, how they kept me on to be on me. But, well, <laughs> but they did. They just... And then uh, Ron is up and says, ah, uh, oh, he says, I want to see you. He says, uh, do you still like the idea of being an inspector? I said, yeah, I would actually. You know, he, again, he saw something in me that I didn't see. It was a funny life, really. <laughs>